Oh man, this should be good. There we go. Disunite Germany. Oh yeah, that is that is some delicious border gore. Oh boy. Yep. Well, there you have it. The French Empire reigns supreme on the European continent. All that's left now is to take out Russia. This is just a matter of time. The, the Russians won't be able to put up much of a fight against your battle-hardened army. Hey folks, Bittersteel here with another Hearts of Iron 4 guide. Today I have for you a small guide for France in La Résistance. Specifically, we are going to restore Napoleon, Emperor of the French, to his rightful throne. So let's select our country. Iron Man on. Historical on. Start the game. First things first, we are going to Attention. get rid of the military. They have failed us in the past. They Attention. will fail us no more. We have no use for these Empty. disloyal troops. So we just select all Empty. of our units, except for one division. The one division that remained loyal and disband. So we take this one division, put them in an army, assign a general. Just station them wherever you feel like and set them to exercising. Yes, the one division training trick still very much works. This one division will supply us with a ton of army experience, which we can later use to modify our templates into more optimal builds. Research, very much the basics of any game. Electronic engineering, basic machine tools, and construction. It's mostly going to be focused on industry early game anyway, because we want to have that good solid foundation in place. Construction. Just fill Ile-de-France, Picardy and Nord-Pas-de-Calais with civilian factories. Why these areas? Simply because they have the largest infrastructure. And the bigger your infrastructure, the more build slots you have, but also the higher your build speed. So these factories will complete the fastest. Military factories. We won't need as many guns right away because we have a ton of guns because we got rid of our army. Same for support equipment. We will need a lot more towed artillery because we will modify our templates to include some more artillery in the optimum templates. No need for tanks. No need for motorized. We still have a very hefty stockpile. And maybe consider adding some towed anti-air. It's this small amount. Start building that because our air force is not quite as impressive. Speaking of the air force, just group them all up. Find all of your fighters scattered throughout the world. Base them in the largest airfield in France. I believe it's the one in Champagne. And set your units to shift click pilot exercises. This will mean they stop exercising when they reach experience level 3. Also note, because France does not produce any oil or virtually no oil, you are going to run out of fuel reserves very quickly. So if you notice that war is around the corner, consider starting hefty imports from the US to get your fuel supply or fuel reserves up. Now finally for the Navy, just select all of your ships, all of your ships into one fleet, base it at Brest, that is your largest port, and put them under an admiral. They will be of valuable use later on. Focuses, of course, we are going to go with revive the national block, then into utilize the leagues, down the council of Rambouillet, and revise the constitution, all the way down here to proclaim the third empire, and on. But first things first, revive the national block. And with that, 
we have everything in place to start our game. France has the industrial base to warrant setting up an espionage agency early, so we'll be doing that. It's just a small upfront cost now for some smooth sailing later on, and especially the cryptology will pay off against tougher foes like Germany. And with our agency in place, we are recruiting a spy. And let's get to work on these, um, well, un unfortunately named pills, shall we? First national focus done. Germany remilitarizing, but we will just be issuing a diplomatic objection. We are in no shape for some actual fighting just yet. Utilize the leaks and onwards. And with our freaky pills done, we get ourselves an operative. Let's see if there's any good ones here. This one seems like a nice fellow. Now, ideally, the 1936 election event public demands rearmament will fire, giving us the option to raise our economy law to early mobilization and boosting our war support. However, for this event to fire, France needs to border a country that is at war, like Italy versus Abyssinia. So if Italy concludes its war with Abyssinia early, like it happened to this run, this event will not be likely to fire. Instead, we will see the election event communists in government fire, since France meets the criteria for this event as well. Namely, they have more than 15% communist support in the country. Now, we don't want any commies in our glorious empire, so we will go for a broad coalition. And the Council of Rambouillet finished. Now we can revise the constitution. Now that we have finished revise the constitution, we will be affected by a national spirit called constitutional revision for one full year. This will give us a small weekly stability tick, but more importantly, we need this spirit to expire so we can continue down the political path towards restoring a monarch to the French throne. As you can see here, to start repeal the law of exile, we must not have the national spirit constitutional revision. So let's use this time wisely and invest in our economy somewhat. To that end, let's pick laissez-faire as it will give us a very hefty 150% research bonus for the entire industry tab three times. That's a no brainer right there. Now with some of our civilian factories finishing up, we will be filling out the areas that we've been building in with military factories. And we'll do this a few more times as more slots open up and more factories complete construction. These will be the most efficient areas to build in. And the quicker we get these military factories up and running, the less problems we'll have with supply later on. There we go with laissez-faire finished. You'll see in our industry tab, we have a few massive bonuses here. We can use that to rush down construction and speed up this burst industry just to get more factories at a higher level of production quicker. Now, having completed laissez-faire, let's pan all the way to the left of the French focus tree and start working on this bit. Devalue the franc is what we'll start out with for a bonus to our consumer goods. Below that, we have several options to develop the metropole and the colonies, followed by investments. Now, it's important to work our way through all of these investments before we move on to the industrial expansion and colonial industry focuses, because these two focuses will give us a bonus to factories in areas that we have previously invested in. So we want to maximize on this before we hit any of these focuses. So let's start out with the Frank. Now the event Spain requests aid can and will fire if the Spanish Civil War has fired in your game. Now this is up to you. Uh, there are two options. One is you do absolutely nothing and the other is taking a small hit in political power and boosting the communist support in your country to be able to lend lease equipment to Republican Spain in exchange for more army experience. Personally, I prefer to just give them some of our worst equipment in exchange for some very valuable military experience. 
So we're going to start a lent lease and just give them some of our worst guns. A few thousand. 4,000 of our worst guns and 1% of our monthly production of cannons. We can always cancel this later. But this will give us a nice trickle of army experience. Now with devalued the Frank done, we're going to build ourselves some highways, the auto routes focus. This will give us infrastructure in some areas, which in turn means faster building, more build slots, and allows us to ramp up our military industry quicker. And we're going to use that giant bonus to rush towards our construction. Get that up as quickly as we can to really push those factories out. Now, with our hefty stockpile of army experience, it's time to start converting some templates. We'll take the first infantry template, because it is very similar to what we'll need, and change it to a box standard 7 infantry, 2 artillery. We can add on some motorized recon companies. We, we have the, the um, trucks for it, so it shouldn't matter. And throw on some support anti-air, because our air force frankly, is not that great. And save. And we can alter the colonial brigades as well by just taking off one unit, making them 10 combat width. And once we get a little bit more army experience, we are also going to be adding support artillery for that extra defense and soft attack. Now, those divisions we've just altered, we're not going to be actually training those, no. There is another trick still in this game. We're going to create an empty template, add on one infantry division, box standard infantry, and save this. Now, what we are going to do is train about 47 of these, so that should be enough to add on to the one division that we have to give us two full armies should be enough to start out with just going to pop them down somewhere and we're going to force deploy these as fast as we can this does not take very long at all and once we have these deployed we'll then convert those into our good infantry divisions so yes, that trick is also still in the game. And we finished auto routes. Now, if world tension has gone in, up enough to give you war support over 12%, we can hit begin rearmament. What we can do, however, is work on economic devolution just to give us another 10% factory output. And you can find the areas that our auto routes are finished in. Like the longer dock here, 80%, 90%, Franche Comté. 80% Picardy. Already had Picardy, I believe. But just find the highest infrastructure areas and just plop down military factories in those. And we can force deploy these units. Gather them up in some army groups, two armies. Let's give each of them a decent leader. And convert them to the proper templates. It's so. one. And that is two. Now we will want to assign a, a good a good field marshal to them. But we don't have any good field marshals. We, we all have these defensive field marshals. And Napoleon does not defend. Napoleon attacks. What we can do is take this general, Jean de Latre de Tessigny, who has brilliant strategist. We will promote him. Assign him as our field marshal. And give him Aggressive Assaulter and Offensive Doctrine. We still have some points left over, so we might as well just pick something else like Charismatic. And now we have a very good Field Marshal to start yeah, things off with. These units will now be training until they are fully trained. And they could do that along the Belgian border. Set up an order for our future invasion. Something to note as France is you have a very high cost to doctrine research. As you can see, it would take us over a thousand days just to research one doctrine. We can bump that down significantly by using 100 army experience. So as France, I don't recommend doing any doctrine research until you have 100 army XP for each research you're going to do. 
So just wait until you have 100 army experience, and then research the doctrine. And we're also going to abandon the grand battle plan for superior firepower as soon as we are able. Now with Japan declaring war on China and the whole world sm slowly starting to smolder, we have enough war support to begin rearmament, giving us four military factories. Let's do that. And in preparation of that, we can set up some more production lines, increase our infantry equipment a little bit, same for towed artillery, and start the construction of some armored cars. They will be very handy for suppressing resistance in the future. Speaking of suppressing resistance in the future, we can take our cavalry division and make it a little bit bigger. Just add one division of cavalry there. And once we research MPs, just plop those in there as well. And with our first 150 political power, we're going to add ourselves an elusive gentleman and giving us an extra spy. Extra spies are always handy. And work on military police. Now with begin rearmament done, it's, it's not worth starting another focus at this point. We'll just wait for October 7th and build up political power until we get to that point. And then we can hit repeal the law of exile. So we're just going to wait and let our political power tick up for now. In your occupied territories tab, might, now might be a good idea to change your, um, your, your garrison template to the cavalry divisions. They have a little more suppression to them. And more military factories, just keep putting these in artillery for now. We will need a lot of artillery to fill our army needs. We can take guns from the Belgians and the, the Dutch, but artillery will mainly need to reduce ourselves. And there we go. We are no longer suffering the effects of constitutional revision, which means we can head down the tree towards the Third Empire. So hit repeal the law of exile. Uh, keep rushing down this construction or alternatively get dispersed industry early and now we can proclaim the third empire and in 70 days napoleon the sixth will become leader of france let's take our political power here and let's plop down a war industrialists to get our factories out even quicker let's get our cannon to a little earlier than usual soft attack is really good and with that, we have proclaimed the Third Empire. There we go. Napoleon VI ruling the French Empire. All right, let's kick things up into a higher gear and start getting ready to avenge Waterloo. We now have another 150 political power, but I'm going to wait with using it until we get Maurice Gamelin available as chief of the army for his 10% division attack bonus. And for that, we will have to do the aggressive focus. We could do that after we have dealt with the Belgians and the Dutch and possibly even the English. And there we go. Avenge Waterloo done. We're going to set as our next focus, aggressive focus, to be able to have a excellent chief of army. We now have several war goals. We have one on Belgium, one on the Netherlands and one on the UK. So, let's start kicking some ass and restoring the French Empire to glory. The Belgians won't put up much, if any, of a resistance. They, they simply don't have the numbers to stop you. And with the aggressive focus complete, we can get our good army guy, the army offense expert. And we still have some political power left, so... Let's consider getting a army logistics specialist, just to reduce that attrition. And there we go, the Belgians have capitulated and they have a nice stockpile of guns for us. Let's just take all of their states and just fully annex them. Now for the Dutch, do the same thing, you set up your field marshal order, draw an attack line. They, they're even weaker than the Belgians, so you just immediately fire off this war as well. And oop, going to delete them from the map. As for focuses, it, it's a good time now to keep going down retribution for Sedan to start hitting on the Germans. 
And the Dutch have even more guns for us and a hefty amount of fuel. But that's not all. We're going to take the Dutch East Indies from them. Satellite them. Do this first. Because if you annex them, you will lose the Dutch East Indies. Just take the Dutch East Indies. And then you take all of the Dutch states. Now we have defeated our Waterloo enemies on the mainland. It's time to set our sights on the big one. The United Kingdom. What you're going to do is take one of your armies. Take the 10 best divisions from that army. And create a naval invasion order. At Cherbourg. Towards Portsmouth. Those 10 divisions can go there. And park the rest of the army on the port. Your other army can stay on the mainland to counteract any naval invasions that the British might try on you. Now, for our future endeavors, we're going to train more of these tiny divisions. About 48, and then add 12 more. 60 divisions should do. You have a full army to man the Maginot, a full army for the Alps, and then some leftovers to deal with Africa. These divisions are going to be turned into colonial brigades who, whose sole purpose will be defending your country, while your actual good units will do much of the pushing. Actually, make that... 72 divisions just just to get that nice full army now to ensure that we can actually achieve naval supremacy in the channel we're going to take our entire navy and set them to patrolling the channel and take everything we have in terms of airplanes set them near north pas de calais and just tell them to have air superiority missions and naval strike units over the english channel now, if you're still guaranteeing Czechoslovakia at, point, at this point, now might be a good idea to revoke that guarantee. Otherwise, you might risk getting pulled into a war with Germany before you're really ready for it. And we can deploy those units. We just trained, set them all to the colonial templates. We'll need a bit of artillery, but we can get those later. So, one army will guard the Alps. One army will guard the Maginot, and this army will guard the French territories in North Africa, and split them between Syria and the um, Algiers region. And we could reorganize the Dutch, get some more compliance out of them. And now we declare war on the British. As you can see, they've immediately started landing troops. All units that are not on the isles are units that they can't use to defend the islands with. So let them come and we will crush them in their ports. There we go. Our army has made a landing and start aggressively pushing into the United Kingdom now. As you can see, we've made quite uh, good headways on the British islands. The French military just overrunning them. Yes, the uh, British be damned. No, I'll leave the Czechs. The Czechs are irrelevant. Let's promote some entrepreneurship. As you can see, the British can't really put up much of a fight. This is this is over. They just don't know it yet. These planes don't really have to do anything anymore. Just get them back to safety. Gardez vos distances. Some more political power that we can throw in somewhere. A, a silent workhorse should be excellent. 
In the peace deal with the UK, we're going to satellite the Raj and British Malaya. And after that, it would probably be best to simply puppet the UK. They have a lot of territory, but it's difficult to control with the new mechanics. And taking the their fleet will be a tremendous amount of power in our hands. Otherwise, we would use a lot of manpower to simply garrison all of their stuff. There we go. Puppeted to the UK. Should have control of their fleet now. And we don't have to worry about um, garrisoning the area. Who, who is this guy? I have no idea. We're going to move our defensive armies over to a defensive field marshal. And our offensive field marshal can hang out in the low countries and this will be where we start our attack against the germans eventually we can use our spies to root out some resistance and keep making moves against germany now espionage is helpful not necessary but certainly helpful so what i like to do is just plop a few divisions onto these ports to ensure no funny business from the italians prepare a few more divisions that we can use to like the Germans get our units some experience so they have less problems holding the front lines we have to keep building these factories just to make sure our war machine doesn't have any hiccups might be beneficial to change out our occupation garrison to something that includes military police and maybe a bit more cavalry just so we have an easier time keeping those Dutch and Belgians under our boot. And now we have reached the end of the line here. Je suis la déluge. This gives you a very great national spirit. 20% of your division training time. 3% recruitable pop. 25% recruitable population factor. The idea that they give you this without actually having to conquer all of the areas leading up to it is insane. This is super powerful, so just rush for it. And your colonial divisions can use some of your leftover recon, the motorized divisions. They should have enough motorized left to fill these out. Meanwhile, we'll just do these development focuses to build up France's strength even more. Maybe just, just kick things off the good old-fashioned way. Declare war without calling my allies. And let's just roll over them as quickly as we can. While we're at it, might as well just get double punch in and reveal their intel. Get a big push going right away. Make use of this war to set ourselves to extensive conscription. Let's just reorganize the front line. Get it stabilized. And from this point on, you might want to take things a little more slowly and micromanage a little bit more. I'm going to tack on some maintenance equipment and just steal some from the Germans while we're fighting them. Yeah, the Germans are fighting us very ferociously. It would seem like there is some small dent appearing in the German army stockpile, so that's good. We're steadily whittling down the German army stockpiles. This might take a while, but eventually we will win this. Let's make the most of the cipher. Let's try to get a little bit of a push going. Oh no, the Italians pushed up out of this one tile. Every time this one tile. Let's change our template. For the garrisons to armored cars, that should reduce our need for manpower and inventory equipment substantially. And it ups their suppression considerably. We're slowly getting there. I think the Germans are just giving us their guns. Yep, Germans just handing us their guns. Oh nice. Nice nice people they those Germans. Should not be too much more now. We seem to have more and more trouble replenishing their losses. Some of these tank divisions are at abysmal strength. The Germans are on their last legs here. Just gonna give them a little bit more of a grind against my lines and they'll start pushing in. I think that was the 
final hurrah of the Germans, that last counteroffensive. So they just start pushing them in now. Yeah, Germany is just crumbling. They have nothing left in the tank. Hey, we made it to Berlin. Vive la France! Germany is stubborn, I'll give him that. There we go, with Italy knocked out. We have defeated the Axis powers. Now it's just a matter of making the world look pretty. Oh man, this should be good. There we go, disunite Germany. Oh yeah, that is, that is some delicious border gore. Oh boy. Yep. Well, there you have it. The French Empire reigns supreme on the European continent. All that's left now is to take out Russia. This is just a matter of time. The, the Russians won't be able to put up much of a fight against your battle-hardened army. Alright, that's been my guide for you guys. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment below, and consider subscribing for more of this content. If you didn't like it, tell me in the comments and hit that dislike button. And I wish you all a very good day. Goodbye.